Open your Bibles with me today to the book of Matthew, chapter 5. And for our study today, I want to talk to you on the subject of something called investment. Investment. Matthew chapter 25. We're going to begin uh, reading Matthew chapter 25, verse 14. And this is Jesus giving a parable. It says, again, it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his wealth to them. To one, he gave five bags of gold to another two bags and to another one bag. Look at this, each according to his ability. And then he went away on a journey. And the man who received five bags of gold went at once and put his money to work and gained five bags more. So also the one with two bags of gold gained two more. But look at this. But the man who had received one bag went off, dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. And after a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. And the man who had received five bags of gold brought the other five he earned and said, Master, you entrusted me with five bags of gold. See, I have gained five more. His master replied, Well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful with a few things, and I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Then the man with the two bags of gold also came. Master, you said you entrusted me with two bags of gold. See, I have gained two more. His master replied, Well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful with a few things. And I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. There's the part in verse 24. It says, Then the man who had received one bag of gold came. Master, he said, I knew that you are a hard man, harvesting where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. So I was afraid. And it went out and hid your gold in the ground. See, here is what belongs to you. Look at the response. His master replied, you wicked and lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. Well, then you should have put my money on deposit with the bankers so that when I return, I would have received it back with interest. So so look at here. So take the bag of gold from him and give it to the one who has 10 bags. Or in other words, take that one bag and give it to the one that invested. Yes. The one that used wisdom and all that they had. Yes. It says, for whoever has will be given more and they will have an abundance. But whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken from them. And that's the scripture I want to read. Isn't that powerful? I want to talk to you for a moment on being a powerful investor. And I want you to know that for us to begin to grow to another level, it always requires something called faith, right? You know, many times people don't grow because they're not being taught. Like I said and mentioned earlier, prosperity is a learned behavior. And in order to step into a new level of prosperity, as believers, we know that it requires faith, right? requires faith you know when i think about every one of you who is running a business and building your families and building your lives i I think every one of you every one of us i should say are at a very critical time of our life sometimes you come to a place where you're building your ministry where you could get into a, a make it or break it season a make it or break it season every every time you're building something it's always going to come to that place where you're either going to make it and you're going to propel yourself to the next dimension or you're going to fall apart. And a lot of that has to do with faith. It has to do with understanding what to do in the right season. And when I think about every one of us, all I really see is great potential. Great potential. That even some of the things that you're experiencing now, actually, that's only just the beginning. But we have to to learn 
that how God works in his kingdom. You see, because God says this to us through this story. It's not just what we have, but it's what we do with what we have. It's what we do with what we have. Now, we know that we have an enemy that wants to hinder our growth. I'll say it this way. You know, sometimes the enemy knows how the kingdom of God works better than Christians. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't it true? Yeah. See, the, the enemy knows. He knows the word. He knows how God works. So the enemy strategizes against us and he begins to affect our faith. And here's what he tries to do. He tries to convince people that, if you, that to not use what God has given you. That's the strategy. To sit on what God has given you. You see, Satan knows that if he can stop a person from investing or from planting, then he can stop God from multiplying what is planted. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So he tries to bring in that fear to get people to not invest and not give into the kingdom of God. So faith is something that's very important to be able to grow anything that we're trying to do. Anything we're trying to do. You have to have faith. You have to have trust and you have to be willing to take that step of investment. Now, I want to teach you five things, five key principles to growing your faith today. Are you with me? Yes. Okay. Number one, write this down. What we have doesn't belong to us. What we have doesn't belong to us. If you look at verse 14, the Bible says that these men were entrusted with something that didn't belong to them. They were entrusted. And... What we should remember is that no matter what we possess, it really doesn't belong to us. How many know it was given to us by God? We were entrusted as stewards. Paul the Apostle said it it is is important that a steward is found faithful, right? A steward is found faithful. What is a steward? According to the definition, a person employed to manage another's property, especially a large house or an estate. So 1 Corinthians chapter 4 talks about it is required of us to be found faithful with what we've entrusted. Now, in those days, it wasn't uncommon for wealthy businessmen to go on long journeys. So they would give their, their, their possessions or their goods to trusted servants or slaves. And these businessmen didn't leave their goods to those people just to be cared for and protected. But they wanted them to be productive while they were gone. It's a powerful story. Because everything that we have in life that's been given to us by God, one day we're going to have to give an account for that. When the Lord returns or when we're taken home, he's going to say, what did you do with what I gave you? That's how that pertains to us. I think it's important to remember that not only do our goods not belong to us, but our life doesn't belong to us. I think it's important for every single one of us, whether you're doing ministry or whether you're building a business, that you're building it in the eyes of God. Yes. That God is saying, that life you have, I gave you that life. What are you doing for the good? How are you making an impact? And how are you being productive? Now, we move at our own, we move at our own pace. But when we, when we view our life as belonging to God, that should put more of a passion and a stirring inside of us. And I'm going to tell you why. Because when you really understand life and you understand the time we've given, we don't have much time. Even if we were to live a hundred years, right? How many know that's still not much time? For a dying man, they say, how much more time do you want? He says, I just want more time. Because a hundred years is not even a long time. So even the time that we have, how many know that we have to live our life well for God? And everything we have, we have to invest it for God's glory so that we could have a return and we could be able to say, God, I've been faithful with what you have given me. So the first principle is that what we have doesn't belong to us. The second key principle to growing our faith is this, is we have what we can handle. We have what we can handle. You remember the story in verse 15. It says he gave each to the person's ability. Mm-hmm. How many know God knows our ability? Yeah. <laughs> God knows what we can handle. And he gave those bags of gold to the people according to the ability. But here's the powerful truth of this scripture. Is that none of us is empty handed. 
<laughs> None of us is empty handed. How many know it's true? You see, we have all been given something to work with. You know, we all have something to work with. We have gifts, we have talents, we have resources, we have abilities. We have things in us. None of us is empty handed. That's what's powerful about the scripture. See, but uh, here's what I've learned is that God will strengthen us in proportion to what we have been given. So whenever God gives you more, he's going to strengthen you to be able to manage it. Whenever he gives you more, I know some of us have been moving into more. And in the beginning, you're afraid. But then you, you don't have to worry because God always gives you the strength to manage the more that he has given you. See, the Holy Spirit wants to teach us this as leaders is that we're never as strong as we believe and we're never as weak as we believe. Mm-hmm. I think it's important to remain humble. Yeah. Yeah. It's important to remain humble when we look at what God has given us. I think I, I've met so many people that are just so, in a sense, sometimes arrogant. Arrogant, especially when you receive a lot when you're young. Yeah. Oh, man, you know, they start yeah. to think, whoo, man, I really am going. But how many know God has a way of humbling you? Yeah. <laughs> but then you have others that sometimes they look down on themselves. Yeah. And they say, I can never do it. I, I can't do it. I don't have the ability. I don't have, you know, in, in, in a sense, sometimes they feel inadequate when it comes to what God has given them. And I want to tell you, you're never as strong as you think you are, but you're never as weak as you think you are. Yeah, it's somewhere in that zone where you learn to handle what God has given you. See, through God, we can handle what we've been entrusted with. Yeah. Yeah. There are two attitudes that we have to deal with in handling what God has given us and two attitudes that can kill our faith. Can I share those with you real quick? Yeah. Number one is complaining. <laughs> How many of you know a complainer? Maybe you've heard someone say, if I only had more, I could accomplish more in my life. Right? And those are the people that get jealous, right? They, they look at... They, they look at other people and they really make an excuse to say if I had more you know if I I had what Pastor Al had or what Pastor Aldo had or if I had what Paul had oh man I'd be blessed just like them it's not true it's not true you see I would say to them is that your, your, your success all depends on what you are doing with what you currently have I'll tell you one thing I've learned about God is God doesn't give you more so that you can complain about it <laughs> God doesn't give you more. God doesn't want you to be a complainer. And God hears those complaints. And God hears that stress go up. And God hears that, you know, that blood pressure rise. And God yeah. hears how you yeah. fight with people and how you get angry and all these things. So God says, hold on, I'm not going to give him more. Because God only gives us what we can handle. Mm-hmm. Isn't that heavy? Yeah. So how many know that if we want to experience more, We have to be willing to grow. Isn't that pretty heavy? So that complaining spirit can kill our growth. What's the second thing? Stress. Stress. How many of you deal with stress? I'm going to stress right this minute. You're like, end this Bible study. I got to get back to work. Uh (laughs) Listen, man, maybe you've heard someone say, I am so stressed out. I can't handle what I'm dealing with. I can't do it all. I can't do it all. Have you ever said that? Yeah. I know I've said that. Yeah. I can't do it all. I can't do everything. I'm, I don't have the ability, right? Well, I could think of many times when I've said that myself, but here's some good news. Once again, you can handle it. God only gives you what you can handle. Because you know why? As Christians, how many know we're not alone? Amen. We're not alone. How many know we have the person of the Holy Spirit? And only just in that itself, the Holy Spirit is our helper, right? Yes. The Paracletos, the helper. But I want to I want to say there's more. Is that many times when God wants to bless you, He wants to teach you not only to work in cooperation with the Holy Spirit, but He wants you to learn how to work in cooperation with others. Yeah. With others, maybe you need to grow your team. Maybe you need to hire an employee. Maybe you need to bring someone on to help you. Maybe you need a personal assistant. Who's hearing this today? Mm -hmm. Maybe you need to make room for others to come in 
and help you to manage what God is desiring to give you. I, I believe that, that the, the windows of heaven are open and he's ready to release something over you, but you haven't gotten to that place where you realize I can't do it by myself. So we have what we can handle. What's the third principle? We must invest what we have. And that's the heartbeat of this. In this story, we learn that it's not enough just to have it. But God is looking to bless people who invest it. Invest it. See, when you and I invest what we've been given, that's when God can multiply it. When, you've heard it said when, when you release what's in your hand, God releases what's in his hand, right? Like I said, I've been working in the gym. And uh, I, I'm, you know, I, I can't lift that much weight right now. But I think, you know, now that I'm getting a little older in age, you know, and I'm, I'm pushing the weight, I was noticing that my, my, bot, my arms were hurting real bad and um, my elbows were hurting. And I'm trying to get this weight up and do it my reps. And one of the guys was there and, and he's bigger. And I just said, hey, you know, you know I'm really having pain here. And why is it that I'm hurting you know I, I, you know I, is it that i'm lifting too much weight maybe i need to lower the weight and he says no i've been watching you he says you can lift the weight he said the problem is your grip he said you're strangling the bar he said if you open up your grip it'll be easier to lift the weight i said that's a giving message yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> is it true luke yes is it, am I right on that? It's bench press, right? Yeah, bench press, yes. Press, I think so. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I started lifting the bar with an open hand. And, it be, and I was able to lift the weight, but I didn't have the pain. <laughs> God's, God's, God's powerful. God's a genius, isn't he? How many of us feel the pain when we grip? But when we release, we can do it. But the pain is removed. See, God says, I want you to invest what I've given you so that I can multiply it. God will multiply it. God cannot multiply what we withhold and what we hold back. And this is just God's way. This is the way God has chosen in his word to bless our businesses, to bless our lives, to bless our companies. This is the way he's chosen. God is an investor. God is an agrarian. See, farmers understand this principle and they understand this. If the law said I would receive exactly what I invested, then farming would not be very lucrative. If I planted a seed and received just one thing back, it wouldn't be a good business to be in. A farmer could not feed himself and he could not feed his family by planting one seed and receiving back a small harvest. But the law of the harvest says this, whatever I plant, whatever I invest, God will multiply it. So now as an investor, I have three decisions to make. I can make decision number one. I can sell some of what I have for profit. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. You can sell what you have for profit, and that is good. If you take your notes, that's good. You know, sell what you have, get a profit. Second decision, I can eat and enjoy what I have for sustenance and strength. Good, right? We have every right to eat what we plant and then eat what we have. That's what a lot of people do. They they. They plant, they reap, they eat it, they enjoy it. There's nothing wrong with that. That's good. But then we have a third decision that we make. We can plant and reap, and then I can reinvest some of it. I can reinvest some of it so that I can have another season of fruit. Yes. Yes. You see, one of the things that I've been teaching our church for years, and I want to teach us, is that be careful that you don't eat all your seed. That's right. Yes. You can enjoy some of your fruit, but never eat your seed. (laughs) Never eat your seed. Always give to God what belongs to him. And then if you want even greater harvest, set some aside for personal investment. This is powerful stuff. A head of corn. One seed. One corn kernel produces one entire ear of corn. But do you know that one ear of corn possesses 250 more seeds on it? So if you go to the market and you, and you can count them, I don't know if it's accurate, but that's, that's what I got here. I counted a, a head, I counted a head of corn. And I came up with 250 seeds. So 
you know, for one seed, you're getting 250 more seeds back. See, God is saying this through creation and we need to catch it. He never intended us to enjoy everything he gave us. He says, enjoy some of it, but have some to plant. Don't eat all of it. Don't consume all of it. Don't imbibe on all of it. Set some aside and plant some for me. Because when you begin to plant it for me, that's when I can give you a brand new harvest. Isn't that powerful? What's the fourth principle? We must use what we have or we will lose what we have. We read about it in verse 24 through 29. And, and, and it really was a stinging rebuke to the unprofitable servant. He, he, what did he do? He took that gold, right? And he said, take it from him. See, it's important to understand why this servant was, un, was unprofitable. And, you know, sometimes we look at the act of him just not investing. But I want to look at the spirit of why he didn't invest. Because it's not the act of not investing, but for every act, there's a spirit behind it. Mm -hmm. For everything we do, it's done in a particular spirit. Mm -hmm. And when you look at this man who only took, he dug the hole and he put the, the, the bag of money in the hole, he was moving in a certain spirit. Now there's three thing, reasons why he didn't invest. Number one, his outlook of his master. His outlook of his master. See, h- how we use what we have is based on what we believe about the one who gave it to us. Based on the what we believe by the one who gave it to us. You know why a lot of people don't invest? It's because they have a fear of authority. They have a fear of authority. Whenever authority comes, they're afraid of authority. And when fear comes in, fear can overpower faith if we allow it to. This servant said it in his very own words. He says, I knew that you are a hard man. And you reap where you do not sow. And what's yours is yours. And I knew you to be a hard man. So what you see is that the person who didn't invest had the wrong outlook. Instead of seeing his investor, or seeing the, his master as someone who was an investor that understood that there is risk involved. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. And if he had planted, invested that money and took a loss, the investor already knows there's risk. Yes. <laughs> and he would have said, well done, I made money here. But I saw that you were willing to invest. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But his concept of his master was all wrong. Mm -hmm. And sometimes our concept of God is all wrong. Mm -hmm. We think he's there to punish us. Mm -hmm. We think he's there to get angry with us. We think he's there to make us feel guilty. That's not God's personality at all. Mm -hmm. God is looking for somebody that will put their trust in him and let him do the miracle. That's the God we serve. You know what God wants out of anything? More than anything, God wants us to learn. He wants to be our teacher. He wants to be our guide. He wants to be the one that takes us from level to level to level. That makes God happy. And so when we do what God says, and we have the right outlook of who he is as our master, then how many know that's why we're able to see great results? The second thing, reason he didn't invest is because he had a wicked heart. You heard him say, he says, you were wicked. So this man who was entrusted with this bag, he wasn't interested in doing anything that did not pertain to his own personal profit. Wow. Yeah. What he had was a selfish spirit. And there are people like that, unfortunately. You, you, you encounter them in business. Wow. They're not really investors. They're just doing business to get what they want, but they're not interested in quality. It's just another job. Come on, talk to me a little bit. They're not interested in beautifying something. 
It's just another job. Mm-hmm. They're, they're not really, they don't have the right heart. Right. They don't have the right heart. Mm-hmm. See, this man didn't have the right heart. He didn't want to show his master a return because he didn't know if he was going to get anything out of it. This young man, look at this, didn't see any honor in stewarding his master's goods. He didn't see any honor in stewarding his master's goods. That, that's heavy. That's deep. How many of people need to learn that? What's the third thing? And this is it. He had a lazy spirit. <laughs> How many have encountered people like that? You know, what can you say here about this guy? Well, the master said it. He just called him downright lazy. (laughs) Paul said that he who does not work will not eat. (laughs) You know, how did this young man use his time? We don't know. But the the master must have had some insight into the person's character. He must have seen him in action, you know. But he gave him an opportunity to do something right, but he failed. And how many know God knows how we use our time? God knows you know, whether we're really giving our all, investing our all, yeah. doing, a, doing a job with our all, um, moving in a spirit of excellence in all that we do. You know, man may not see it, but how many know God sees everything? Yes. God sees everything. He knows when we're not having a good day, whether we're still, you know, doing that thing to the utmost ability. I know God watches me. I'm having a bad day. Are you still preaching with passion, son? You still giving your all? I know you don't feel good. Are you tired? Do you feel used and abused? But are you still giving your all? Because man may not know, but I'm watching you. Yes. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. And that's the spirit of excellence that brings blessing into our life. Yes. Yes. As I close, did you get something today? Oh, yes. The fifth principle is... What we have leads to abundance or agony. Abundance or agony. The master said it. He said, for everyone who has, look at this, more will be given. Mm -hmm. To whoever has, more will be given. But from him who does not have, even what he has will be taken away from him. Isn't that heavy? Even what he has will be taken away from him. But, but look at this part. Everyone who has, more will be given. Is that true? Do you believe that to be true? Have you seen it with your eyes? Yes. That it seems like the people who are practicing these principles and they're stepping into more, it just seems like more just keeps coming. More just keeps coming. You know, more, more work, more status, more influence, more finances, more resources. It's, it's a principle. I was telling one of the police officers in our meeting, I says, he's like, I got a lot to do. I said, you know, haven't you heard that? The world is run by tired people. Yeah. <laughs> the world is run. Or how about this quote? If you ever want to get something done, give it to someone who's already doing something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because then you know it's going to get done. But if you give it to a guy that's just sitting there sipping on a Slurpee, come on, somebody. (laughs) You know it's not going to get done. So God is the one that set that in motion with us. You see, there are two types of people here and and people we deal with. Number one, those who are going to move into some amazing blessings. They're going to keep prospering. You're going to keep prospering. Amen. You're going to keep prospering because you're not lazy. And you're investors and you're willing to sow and you're willing to stretch yourself. That's why I want you to go to this thing on June 8th and expose yourself to the mayor and be a part of that because you need to expose yourself. You need to see what's going on in your city. Get a bigger vision because you're going to keep prospering. You're going to keep prospering. You're going to keep growing. And you have to put yourself in that position so that God could begin to send you more. But then you have those that need to get on track. They need to learn how to invest. Learn how to trust God with everything they have. You know, uh, you have them in your business. Break that lazy spirit. (laughs) Break that wicked heart. 
Stop thinking negative about the master. Stop thinking negative about you. Maybe you got to get one of those employees and say, let me talk to you. What do you think about me? Mm. Be honest. Mm. Am I a hard (laughs) man reaping where I do not sow? (laughs) Am I demanding? And, and, And hear their heart. And they say, well, you know, you could be a little intense sometimes. <laughs> and you, as a master, say, I'm willing to change. Amen. Because I realize the more that I could change your view about me, the more productive we can all be for the glory of God. Yes. Isn't that important? Yes. And that requires humility, doesn't it? Yes. Yes. But then, if they're lazy... And you believe in them, you got to work with them. Yeah. Now, if you don't believe in them, it's unfair to you and it's unfair to them to keep them on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You see, mm-hmm. and sometimes you have to make those hard decisions mm-hmm. to move people on to other things. Mm-hmm. But if they're open and they're willing to grow how many know we can get great things out of them for God's amen. glory? How many can say amen? amen? But it all begins with us. Yes. How do we view the master? How do we view God? How do we view Jesus? And then are we willing to invest? And I know many of you are. You're all investors. But you know, I'm, I'm saying, God, it all belongs to you anyways. Can I do more? Yes. Mom. You know, with my time, my talent, my treasure. Can I do more? Because I know more is headed my way. So today I want to thank you for hearing this word. Mm. And I pray you are blessed. Yes. And I pray you'll keep striving. Amen? Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Thank you. Sure.